Hey guys, Alex here. Welcome to Cybersecurity Version 2. I like to keep my videos up to date at least yearly, and I made a cybersecurity video about one year ago, one year and one week ago today. I released my WG cybersecurity video, and it was probably my most popular video I had outside of like my computer science WGU videos and outside of the degree rankings video I did as well. So it was a very popular video. WGU cybersecurity is an extremely popular degree among accelerators. So for those of you in the military watching this video, thank you for your service. I always do appreciate the military very, very much. So my grandfather, my great grandfather was in the military. Uh, I was a Marine, uh, Purple Heart. Um, big supporter of the military. So thank you for your service for anybody that is watching this video. So anyways, guys, I'm going to go over this. Not Nothing has really changed, but I do like to keep my videos and spreadsheets up to date at least, you know, yearly. So nothing has really changed. WGU has not really updated this program, but like I said, I like to keep my videos up to date at least on a yearly basis. So I'm going to go over this version two. And if there is any edits, I will make those in the spreadsheet. So if WGU does edit something, I will edit it in the spreadsheet, just like drop a comment and tell me like something's been edited and I will go check it out. So, because you know, WG doesn't like send me like all this current information or anything like that. This is all self research on my part. So we'll get into the video today. I'm gonna show you how you can hack this degree in six months. I'm gonna show you how you can transfer all these ACE credit courses and get your full fledged WGU cybersecurity bachelor's degree in basically one term. Now, you'll spend a good four to five months getting the ACE credits probably, unless you're like really, really fast, and then you can maybe do it a little sooner than that. But we'll say four, you know, four to five months to get all the ACE credits. And then, and then we'll do the WG degree in one term, maybe two terms, but it is possible you can get it done in one term. So also, if you have any of the certifications already, it would help you immensely. All right, guys, we are in the spreadsheet. And I'm going to show you how to hack this degree and what courses you can transfer in here. And this is a brand new spreadsheet. You can download this at majormash.com. Go to majormash.com, click WGU Cybersecurity, and you will see a downloadable spreadsheet. So don't click the one that says spreadsheet link. That'll bring you to a Google Docs, which is the old spreadsheet. What you want to do is click the download button, the download arrow button, and it will download this brand new spreadsheet to your computer. So I would highly recommend to do that. Uh, sorry guys, it's very early in the morning still. I'm still waking up drinking my cold brew coffee. So excuse me. So I have designed the spreadsheet to be multiple different sections here. This one took me a little while to put together, so I hope you guys appreciate it. Um, it is much better than my last spreadsheet in my opinion. So up here you have all the ACE credit courses. And this section is in light gray. So in light gray, you have all the ACE credits uh, courses. And there's a link to all the courses. So you can click this, and it'll bring you to the course you need to do. And that is a feature I've had suggested by a lot of people for a long time. They want the links to the ACE credit courses uh, just to make everything a little easier. So when, when I did these spreadsheets a year ago, I didn't think it was all that necessary to link them. You know, because you can just type it in, but I was like, you know what, might as well make it as easy as possible for you guys and link it and give you give you the recommendation that you want. So now you can just click them and it'll bring you right to the ACE credit course. So here on Place of Study, right, it shows you what website it's on, study.com. And then there's one straighter line course down here. And here is something new for these spreadsheets, okay? So before we get into the spreadsheet today, I'm going to show you how the tracker works. Basically, you have not started in progress and past, and you use this little drop down arrow right here. Now, if you click past, right, okay, we're gonna go down here, and all of a sudden, you have three transfer credits completed and three total credits completed. So, three transfer credits completed, three total credits completed. Now, let's say on the certification thing, we go like this, past. That'll put you at six credits and six credits. And if we go to the WGU courses here and we click past, you have total credits completed six. You have WGU cre uh, credits completed, sorry, transfer credits completed six, WGU credits completed three, and total credits completed nine. So it's a very in-depth tracker. Like you can use this throughout your entire education journey. 
from your first course on study.com to your final course at WGU. So now we're going to go back and put these at not started. Sorry, guys, the trash guy is here and he is extremely loud. So I apologize if you can hear it. Anyways, we're going to. So on this side, you get the WGU course equivalent list and then all the units right here. So, OK, let, let's let's finally get into this. Here are the courses you're going to take on ACE credit platforms. You have English, which you'll take at study.com. My recommendation, you'll probably get this done in seven days um, because there's going to be a decent amount of writing. So the, the courses that don't have writing, you can fly by much faster. My recommendation is if you really want to be an accelerator, you know, try to put in at least three hours a day. But if you want to get these done in the timelines, the timelines I'm saying, try for like five to six hours a day. You know, like I know that's not for the faint of heart, but if you want to accelerate a college degree, you know, this is not exactly like easy stuff. It's extremely possible. It's just a time investment. It's not hard. It's just a time investment. So if you got five, six hours laying around, you can definitely get all these done in the timelines I'm saying. So communications 101, that you get this done in three days. You get this one in, you can get this one done in two or three days, American government. Uh, any lab course takes a while. So this one might be seven or eight days. And then computer science 102 is a very fast course. One of the easier courses on study.com. So you can get this one done in probably three days. So this one has a writing assignment. So you're probably looking at five or six days. And for principles of health, you're looking at probably just a few days on that one. And then most of these computer science courses right here are going to take you database fundamentals. You can get done in four or five days, maybe sooner. The thing with database fundamentals is there's no, um, it's just quizzes and there's no writing assignment and there's no project. So you really can get it done in three, four, five days for sure. Probably three days if you really hustle. So, and database stuff is really important to any job guys. This is like the universal thing in any tech job. You should really know database stuff. You should really know SQL stuff. It's useful in any kind of tech job, any kind of engineering job. It is useful. So you definitely want to learn database fundamentals. It's very crucial. A lot of you probably already know database fundamentals. Introduction to networking is a pretty easy course on study.com. And I would highly recommend you take this course on study.com because this course for a foundation course, it's actually really hard on WGU. I actually really struggled with this course on WGU, although I was brand new to like networking stuff, but it is a, it's a pretty hard course for a foundational course. Like you're not going to think it's one of those courses that's disguised as like an introductory course. But unless you already know a lot about network and security, it's actually pretty difficult. Uh, introduction to programming has this used to not have a writing assignment and now it does apparently. So probably going to spend seven or eight days on it. It's introduction to programming is extremely, uh, extremely useful. You need to know programming. Um, once again, any tech job, you need to have at least a few programming classes, especially introduction to programming. This will teach you all your basics for any programming language, you know, your arrays, you know, just proper syntax and all that good stuff. So, you know, how to do loops. And so this will teach you, if you never, ever learned programming, this will teach you all the bare bones. It's actually a pretty good course. So database programming, this course has an assignment, probably going to take you, probably going to also take you a week. Uh, programming in Python, this has a, an assignment too, but it's, it's not that hard. I think I did this class in like five days. So not that hard. Um, and if you do the introduction to programming class, you get a lot of the quizzes completed already. Like you get credit for the, uh, you get credit for the lessons in this one. So that's one of the great things about study.com is a lot of the computer science courses have crossover. Uh, for example, introduction to networking and introduction to cyber security will definitely have crossover as well, where you'll get credit for some of the lessons already. So, cause they have the same lessons. Some of them have the, the same lessons. So you get credit. For example, you'll probably get like 15% credit in that course just by doing this course. So that's one of the really, really cool things about study.com. And a lot of people don't know that. So introduction to cybersecurity, uh, I'll get rid of fundamentals of information security, probably a one week course at most. Cybersecurity risk analysis. So these courses are 300 level courses, which do come with like a big writing assignment. 
so these will take you, yeah, they'll probably take you a solid week each as well. And then college algebra, I recommend on straighter line. You can take it anywhere you want, though. Thing is, I think algebra and calculus are easier on straighter line because you can use a calculator uh, and you can get 0% on the proctored final if you get 100% on all the open book exams. So math, I think, is a cheat code on straighter line, although I do prefer study.com. So, but I'd rather make you guys work smarter and not harder. So here we have is the certification section. And to be honest with you guys, you know, unless you really, really want to get WGU done in one term, like for sure, I would recommend a lot of times to just skip the certification part because certs take a while. Uh, hopefully you guys already have some of these, but you know, certs do take a while to study and get them. You know, maybe I'd recommend getting at least one of these, like maybe getting your A plus and transferring that in because these two courses at WGU take like a while. I've heard some people get stuck on these like three weeks each. So, you know, if you're going to get any of these, I'd probably just get A plus, but you, you can shoot for all of them for sure. If you want, right. If you want to like absolutely 100% minimize your WGU time, you can just shoot for every single one of these. So, although you can't shoot for all of them because you do have to do at least 32 credits at WGU. So here are the courses you have to do at WGU no matter what. Ethics and Technology, that is a one-day course. You can study for that the same day and pass it the same day. This course is like a few days too. And this course is like a very short course too. So these are all like very easy courses. And then you have your capstone. So the thing is, even though this is only uh, this is only 8, 11, 14 credits, you have to do at least 32 credits at the school. So you'd have to choose not to do some of these certs basically. I would definitely recommend doing all the ACE credits because those are much more easy than the certifications. But you'd have to choose not to do some of the certs so you do at least 32 credits at the school. And then when you do some of these certs, they actually give you credit for both, right? So A plus gives you two courses and then you have Network Plus, or not Network Plus, but uh, CCNA will give you two courses as well. It'll give you both the network courses. And then if you pass the associate of IS. C exam that gives you literally like four courses. So that's a uh, pretty awesome as well. Actually, it gives you five courses. It gives you one up here too that you wouldn't have to do. And I go over that uh, right here. So if you get the associate of ISC, it'd give you five courses and I list them all down here. Uh, so basically here are your certifications. You have your Linux plus or your LPI Linux essentials. Uh, you have your EC Council ECES, Foundations version 4, CompTIA Network Plus or CCNA or Cisco CCENT. Um, and then, yeah, you have your, your associate test right here. And then this one, you can do your pen test plus, which would get rid of penetration testing. And then also pen test plus would get rid of network and security applications. So pen test plus would actually get rid of two courses. So. I would really recommend if you're going to do any of the certs, do a cert that gets rid of like at least two courses. So that'd be your CCNA, it'd be your pen test plus, or it'd be your A plus. And out of those three, I'd recommend A plus. Although I'd probably recommend trying to do like two out of three of those would be great as well. So you can eliminate four courses. And you have 122 credits in this program and you can transfer in 90 transfer 90 WGU credits. And up at the top here, you have 30% off your first three months to study.com. And you just click on this link, or you can click on a link at my website. And that'll take you, uh, once you click on the link, you would go to checkout, you, you'd click the little banner, and then you create an account and it would take you to checkout. Or if it if the little banner doesn't pop up, just create an account and go to checkout after you click the link. But 30% uh, off for three months, that saves you hundreds of dollars. So I highly recommend that. So Alex, is a cybersecurity degree a good degree to get? I like a cybersecurity degree. It is in at least my top 15 overall degrees. I ranked it in, I did a little tier ranking for college majors. I think I did that video three and a half weeks ago if you guys want to check it out. And I think I put cybersecurity in my A tier. So not quite S tier, but A tier. I think it's a fantastic degree, especially if you're coming out of the military, which many of you are watching this video. It's the most popular degree among military members, especially military male members. So very popular degree there. And I think if you are military, you would get a job a little easier with a cybersecurity degree compared to somebody who's not military with a cybersecurity degree. But overall, 
you've heard me mention, you've heard a lot of other YouTubers mention, hey, there's no cybersecurity entry level jobs. And that is true. There is no cybersecurity entry level jobs. Most of them really want a lot of experience. But that does not mean that you're not going to get any job. You're probably going to start out with some IT entry level job. Now, if you do have some IT experience, then it is, it's more possible to get a uh, cybersecurity job right away if you already have IT experience. But if you have no tech experience at all, you're probably shooting for like some entry level IT job, maybe help desk, but maybe something a little beyond help desk. You know, since you do have a bachelor's degree, you have a cybersecurity bachelor's degree. So you want to aim for something a little higher than help desk. But overall, you might have to work your way into cybersecurity. Although it is possible to get your first job in cybersecurity. My recommendation would be obviously at first aim for the moon, you know, uh, apply to cybersecurity jobs, security analyst jobs, um, make sure your resume is really good, always attach a cover letter. You know, it's great to make your resume as good as possible. Internships help too. apply to internships. Internships are usually like four months and it looks great on your resume. A free shout out to Josh Matacor, completely free shout out. Um, he has an internship program, I think, so you can check that out. And another thing would just be make sure you have some certifications. So cybersecurity is the one world and the IT world in general, but mostly the cybersecurity world where they actually do care about your certifications. Certifications matter even more so than a bachelor degree in the cybersecurity world world so you want to add your certifications at least your entry level certifications like at least security plus like you want to have at least one or two entry level certifications preferably a lot more and a, a certification that looks great in cybersecurity would be like one of the cloud certifications too so but like azure aws or something like that but overall get at least one entry level security certification get your bachelor degree uh, make sure your resume is great attach a cover letter and try to get an internship. So uh, as long as you're motivated, as long as you're determined, you'll definitely land uh, your first tech job. So I believe in you guys. And I'd like to thank you guys for watching the video today. I hope I was some help. And you could download the spreadsheet over at majormash.com. So you can always get started on your career journey. You can always get started on your bachelor's degree. You can always get started on a career transition change. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you could like, comment, subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. So one of the biggest things for the YouTube algorithm is when you comment, actually, when you comment or like, especially comment, it sends the video to new people. So the YouTube algorithm loves comments. So if you guys could leave a comment down below, it would mean the world to me. You know, I have given you the spreadsheet for free and all my resources are free. So if you guys can leave a comment down below, it would mean a lot to me. So thank you guys. Take care.